In this week's road trip, we're living like kings. Stroll down our favorite avenue. What if I told you the Bronx could bring Italy to you? We're taking you inside Arthur Avenue's retail market, and let's just say it's pretty historic. And we're smashing our way to a stress-free life. Road trip starts now. Hello and welcome to Road Trip. I'm Shannon Lanier. Now, I don't know about you all, but this warmer weather has my family ready to get out exploring. Calling all lords, ladies, and Lanier's. We're taking a very regal road trip where you'll be treated like royalty. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live like royalty in a big castle? Call me King Carter. King Carter. Well now, you can get pretty close to that experience with a tour and or overnight stay at Ohika Castle and Estate in Huntington, New York on Long Island's famed Gold Coast. So how much did it cost to build the castle? So in the early 1900s, Otto Hermann Kahn built this 109,000 square foot castle with 127 rooms. Back then it cost about $11 million. Today that is valued at over $300 million. And it's still considered the second largest residence here in the United States. So what's the coolest room here? Our Charlie Chaplin room. He was a very close friend of the original owner, Otto Herman Kahn. He would often come here and perform in character for some of his employees' families. Thus we have a room dedicated to him completely, full of his memorabilia from over the years. I love going on social media and seeing all of the different events. This is the Olmsted Gardens with reflecting ponds. Ohika Castle has just been the backdrop to so many great events. You had Kevin Jonas's wedding here. You had Joey Fatone's from NSYNC's wedding here. You had Taylor Swift's Blank Space video. I mean, this is the sky's the limit. We've done so many parties here, so many commercials, even TV shows like Gossip Girl. Ohika Castle just really stands by itself. We want everybody to come enjoy us. That's cool, but is this place haunted? <laughs> You know, it is an old building, but no, it's not haunted. We actually host an annual paranormal investigation here. If you want to come and see, we are hosting a ghost hunting sleepover this fall. Yeah. <laughs> a ghost hunting sure works up an appetite. <laughs> what <are> we... <laughs> Luckily, the OHK Bar and Restaurant has food fit for a king, and you can actually dine here even if you are not staying at the hotel. From the gourmet food to the French Chateau style castle to the 22 acre property and stunning garden. It is no surprise that the Ohika Castle is on the National Register of Historic Places and should be on your list for an awesome road trip. From castles to cauldrons, attention muggles, there's no need to travel through platform nine and three quarters to get to Hogwarts. Just head over to Grand Central because the Wizarding World is right here in New York City. Come along with Jordan Kassane for a peek at some Harry Potter movie magic. Whether brewing potions or casting spells, the wizarding world awaits you. There I am, and I'm gonna learn Wingardium Leviosa. Woohoo! I did it! So now I have one points for my Hogwarts house, which is Ravenclaw. And we're here to really bring fans an opportunity to celebrate all of the filmmaking magic of the Wizarding Worlds. So we have elements from Harry Potter, we have elements from the Fantastic Beasts film series, as well as the Broadway show Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Giving our viewers a behind the scenes look inside the Wizarding World. I'm gonna select my favorite Hogwarts house. I'm gonna select that. I'm also gonna select my favorite wand. We've got all of these large wands here. That, um, these are all of the I iconic wands. From the wand room to to the potion room, different imaginative, immersive interactions are offered in each gallery. I'm feeling lucky, so I'm gonna go with Felix Felicis. Would you look at that? I brewed it successfully. Now, if brewing up concoctions are less your speed, Harry Potter the Exhibition offers viewers a chance to get up close and personal with original costumes and props from the iconic films. Look, it's dirty, it's tattered. I mean, it, it feels so real, like it just walked off of the film set. Guests can even set their sights on the invisibility cloak. See? Or maybe you're more of an athletic alchemist. Take a minute to pitch some Quidditch with a quaffle toss, just like in the movies. There we go. Woo! 10 points for Ravenclaw. <laughs> Hogwarts hopefuls can even venture inside the spot the world first met Harry Potter. Be right back, I'm going in. Ah! <laughs> the cupboard under the stairs, the perfect spot to end your enchanting journey. But they're still fun. 
or fright to be had. The exhibition really does offer something for any kind of witch or wizard, including those with sensory challenges. We ensure that there's amenities available for those that may struggle with things like light, sound, and sensory processing in general, so that they can experience everything the world has to offer at their own pace. My favorite here are our sensory headphones. We have an ID card, fidget tools. Ensuring that wizards of all abilities can join in on the magic. Now we're off to Westchester. Our Nikita Ramos is taking us to some workshops with talented artists. We're going to make one of a kind treasures. Art has a way of connecting pieces, perspectives, and people. <laughs> it's like a conversation. You know, they're looking at it from their perspective, but they're seeing yours as well. Combined with creativity, that's cultivated at Bethany Arts Community in Alsene. Today we're going to do hole punch art. So what you're going to do essentially is start hole punching. Like Swiss cheese. <laughs> Sign up for unique workshops where studio artists like Tamara will spark ways to express yourself. You'll also brush up on a brief history of the type of art that you sign up to learn about. And you'll quickly learn that the map to your masterpiece works better without borders. There are no mistakes. You're deciding that yourself. So it's not wrong. It's just you're, you're working through the process of creating. This is the whole punch artwork that I made today. And this is just one of many avenues news to create here at Bethany Arts Community. From music and dance to sculptures and sketches, speaking of the many forms of art, a short ride north will take you to Croton River Artisans Gallery. Art, I think, is a therapy in a way, or a release, or an expression of creating something. Those feelings can also resonate with you as you browse this eclectic space in the village of Croton-on-Hudson. It's co-owned by seven local artists that showcase and sell their own work. Come in, have a place to see art, participate, purchase, do workshops. You should definitely check with the artists here because each month they hold workshops to help you explore different techniques. It's just more ways to learn how to express yourself on this road trip close to home. In Croton, Nikita Ramos, News 12. Get ready, road trippers, because we're heading down one of my favorite avenues. Our next stop, Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. Pack your appetite for this road trip, because you're going to want to go over and over again. If you've walked inside the Arthur Avenue retail market, the authentic Italian experience is nothing new. This is like the mecca of the food world. You get everything you want here. Behind the counter at Peter's Meat Market is Michael Arella. He says he's been in business since he was 13, arriving from Italy nearly 55 years ago. Yeah, I was still going to school. My partner was here, so we went partners in 1976, believe it or not. Every customer treated like family. A customer comes in, I already know what they want because they're, they're regulars. But what if I told you it's not just about good eats? A few steps over and what used to be a small cigar booth is now a boutique filled with all Dominican artisans who hand roll cigars to perfection. For Paulino, it's about quality, a market filled with variety. That the true value of this market is the hard, hard work ethic that we were taught and we're able to continue doing. Everything is fresh, everything is handmade here, nothing is prepackaged from Steaks, colors, ten uh, different types of sausages. Eli Murillo, News 12. Now it's time to work off those calories and stress because have you ever been so mad that you wanted to just break stuff? Well, we're off to a rage room in Tom's River to let loose and smash. Today I'm thinking of everything that makes me upset. So upset that I just want to break something. <laughs> We're in Tom's River at Smashing City Razors. So how we started, it was 2019. This is something that I've always wanted to do. We have three different rooms that you go into. You get to pick your own music, and then you pick a package, and it's usually filled with like dishes, glasses, mugs, things like that. And then you also get an electronic item, which usually ranges from TVs, printers, laptops or keyboards. Rage Rooms has actually been around for about 20 years. It started in China as a way for the people to release stress. They thought that if people could had a place where they could go to release stress, they would be more productive on the workforce. Hence, 
rage rooms were born. My wife and I wanted to open up a rage room. We were looking for something else to do, something different, something fun. And one day we were sitting on the couch and we were watching an episode of a particular program we watched, and they went and did a rescue inside of the rage room. And we kind of looked at one another at the same time and it was like, <laughs> We usually do bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, regular birthday parties here. We do have a smaller package that's called our Spongebob package, which is for our six to nine year olds. We also have a mobile unit where we come to you and we provide you with the same experience that you would get if you came here, but in the comforts of your own home. Sometimes we get people who come in here where they're like a little frustrated and when they leave, they leave out of here with such relief and smiles. Some people say it's cheaper than therapy. The experience I get when I come in here is that I get to help people in a lot of different ways. I get to help people deal with emotional problems. I get to help people deal with situations of joy, anger, you name it, and see the transition that they experience. It's like a metamorphosis. Like they come in here one way and they leave a totally different way. Welcome back to Road Trip, I'm Shannon Lanier. Are you back working in your garden outside growing vegetables? Well, even if you don't have a green thumb, come along with us to Old Weathersfield, a perfect road trip to grow and gather. It's really, it's almost like a community gathering place. It's really special. We are in Old Weathersfield, Connecticut, and we are at Heirloom Market, Comstock Ferry, so we opened in 2016. When we took over about eight years ago, you know, we, we felt very fortunate to be the current kind of like caretakers of this very special piece of property. It's got so much history. Comstock Ferry was, uh, at one point, was the oldest continuously run and seen business in the country. Well, we wanted to carry on the heritage of the building and continue selling seeds. We sell over 1,100 varieties of heirloom seeds. Here are some, uh, just a small portion of the seeds that we offer. It starts way over there and kind of comes all the way around the room and this is where it ends, right here. All of the, the vegetables and non-flowers, they're all uh, non-GMO and they're all heirloom varietals, which is really special and there's a huge variety. It's kind of like going to like a record store, right? You kind of flip through the albums and actually look, them at, look at them and hold them in your hand. So when we came upon this place and decided to take over, we weren't really in, like we weren't gardeners, we were retailers, uh, we were restaurant people. You know, the model of our business is from scene to plate. You know, we didn't originate scene to plate as an idea, but we just, we, it fits so well. So it's counter service, you come in and order, but yeah, we have full menu, so breakfast, lunch, we do dinner three nights a week now. We do soup salad sandwiches, once the season starts, almost all the produce in here is local. Um, and not only do we have it for retail, but it's also incorporated in our menus. So what you see on the shelf is literally our pantry. It's what you see what we're, what we're cooking with. We just kind of let the building, the customers, the town, the world, the vibe that's going on kind of lead us. What's great about it is just the feeling of the space complemented by the quality of the product that we're serving. And most of all, the people that we have working here. So to see people coming in and out of the doors, occupying the space uh, for any reason, even sometimes people just come in here just to be here. You can really come to Old Weathersfield and not only spend a day, but spend a weekend. This is a really cool destination town. Like if you need a road trip, this is the town you wanna to come to. Time now to head to New Jersey for a special place for aviation and history buffs. Known as America's first defense airport, the Millville Army Airfield Museum is dedicated to telling the stories of those who trained there, died there, and went on to serve our country. In August of 1941, this was dedicated as the first America's air defense airplane. And what happened, we trained pilots, and they came here and learned gunnery. The P-47 Thunderbolt actually went through here. They did ground gunnery training. The P-40 Warhawk was first, but then the Thunderbolt, which we are known for, is um, 
you know, our, our claim to fame, as we should say it. Out of 1,500 pilots, unfortunately, 14 lost their lives. Back in November, I volunteered for their special project, and that is to get in contact with any family members of these 14 pilots who perished in training here between 1942 and 45. They fought for this country in something that they very much believed in. Unfortunately, we're losing most of our veterans from Second World War, they're no longer here. So we encourage to get these people in to get interviewed and to donate stuff so we can put it in here. What is so nice is when we do bring in the donation, we actually ask the person who donates it for a picture that either goes with the uniform or goes with the artifact. Never knew anything about the 442nd, the Go For Broke, the Purple Heart Battalion. I come here and I start reading the names. I knew 90% of these families. I played football with them. I played baseball with them in high school. So we like to make each story personal and that's why we're so unique. This is the Link Trainer Building. This building was built to train pilots in instrument flying in the, the early 40s when the airport was functioning. You're loose. Whoa. All the work in here to do this is done by volunteers. Well, the MUT, it stands for Military Utility Transport Truck. It had been disassembled, so we put it back together. Uh, I think we spent somewhere close to seven months working on this. This is the nose section of a C-47 troop transport plane. And the reason why I got involved with this restoration and as a volunteer, my father flew 21 combat missions as a pilot in the C-47 during World War II in the European theater. Basically, ever since I learned how to read, I've been reading and studying World War II. So when I retired, you know, it made perfect sense to come over here. There's so much stuff in here. Not just from World War II, but from what is going on in our world today. I walk around and I see, I find something new each time. And I've been doing this for over a couple years now. Kickstart your summer at the 25th annual New Jersey Seafood Festival. It's returning to Silver Lake Park in Belmar. Scallops, lobster rolls, shrimp and seafood specialties as far as the eye can see. There will be live music, family friendly activities and crafts from local vendors. This year's Sag Harbor American Music Festival is taking place September 26th through the 29th. The free outdoor concert features everything from gospel, blues, jazz, country, and rock. And you know what's pretty cool? Most of the performing artists are from the Long Island area. So plan that road trip to come rock out. You can scan the QR code where you can get the latest updates on the festival. <laughs> 